Hey everyone, I hope you are all doing well. It's 16th lecture and this lecture is first part of 16th lecture and the topic of this lecture is reproduction. So in this lecture we will discuss about reproduction, asexual reproduction, sexual reproduction as well as the sexual reproduction in plants. The further topics of 16th lecture will be covered in the next lectures. Firstly, we will discuss that what is reproduction. So reproduction is the process of making for more of the same kind of organisms. There are two types of reproduction. First is the asexual reproduction and second one is the sexual reproduction. Firstly, we will discuss that what is asexual reproduction. So, asexual reproduction is the process that results in the production of genetically identical offspring from one parent. So, asexual reproduction is the process in which genetically identical offsprings from one parent are produced. What are the advantages of asexual reproduction? So the first advantage is that it is quick. Second is that only single parent is required in asexual reproduction. Third one is that good genetic characteristics are always passed on in asexual reproduction. And the fourth one is no dispersal so offsprings will grow in the same favorable environment. So these four are the some advantages of asexual reproduction. Now we will look at what are the disadvantages of asexual reproduction. So disadvantages include little variation that is the less adaptability to a change in the environment. Second one is that unlikely to withstand disease if parent not resistant. So if parent not resistant to a certain type of the diseases, there is a chances to withstand, unlikely withstand disease. Lack of dispersal lead to increased competition for the nutrients. So these three are Disadvantages of asexual reproduction. Now we will discuss that what is sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is the process that involves the fusion of haploid nuclei to form a diploid zygote and the production of genetically dissimilar offsprings. As we know that in asexual reproduction, we have learned that genetically identical offsprings are produced, but in sexual reproduction, genetically dissimilar offsprings are produced. And it is a process that involves the fusion of haploid nuclei to form a diploid zygote. So, we can also define this sexual reproduction as the formation of a new organism by the fusion of gametes. So the formation of new organism by the fusion of gametes is known as sexual reproduction. Now we will discuss that what are the advantages of sexual reproduction. First advantage is that variation among offsprings and therefore more adaptable to a changing environment. In sexual reproduction, genetically different organisms are produced. So there is a variation among the offspring and this variation makes them more adaptable to a change in the environment. So they are more likely to withstand diseases if we talk about the plants, in plants seed dispersal reduce the competition for the nutrients as offsprings will grow in different environment. So these 
are some advantages of sexual reproduction now we will discuss that what are the disadvantages of sexual reproduction so disadvantages include these two first one is that requires the fusion of two gametes as we know that sexual reproduction requires the fusion of gametes so it is also a disadvantage of sexual reproduction and it is slower process we have learned that asexual reproduction is a quick process while sexual reproduction is a slower process which is also a disadvantage now we will discuss the sexual reproduction in plants in the flower of most plants there are both stamens which are known as male organs and carpels which are female organs this is a condition known as bisexual or hermaphrodite so in sexual reproduction in plants there are both in flowers of the most of the plant there are both stamens which are the male organs and carpels which are the female organs and this is a condition which is known as bisexual or hermaphrodite but some plants also have the unisexual flowers a plant flower has both a male part containing the pollen and the female part which contains the ovule so male part which is the stamen it contains the pollen and the female part contains the ovule male part in the flower is stamen and female part is pistil or carpel so the male part of the plant is known as stamen and the female part of the plant is known as pistil or carpel sexual reproduction occurs when the pollen from the stamen of one flower successfully reaches the ovule of either the same flower or a different flower so sexual reproduction in plants occurs when pollen from the stamen of one flower transfer to the ovule of either of the same flower or the different flower so the important concepts to understand in sexual reproduction of the plant are first is that transfer of pollen is known as pollination and successful pollination results in fertilization a flower can self pollinate which means that pollen transfer within the same flower or a different flower of the same plant a flower can also cross pollinate which means that pollen transfer to a different flower of a different plant so a flower can self pollinate as well as cross pollinate what is meant by self pollination in self pollination pollen transfer within the same flower or a different flower of the same plant but in cross pollination pollen transfer to a different flower of a different plant so this is the basic difference between self pollination as well as the cross pollination so this is the structure of a flower in which we can see the anther filaments which are known as the stamen petal sepal ovule this part is known as ovule here is the ovary this is style this is stigma so this is the part these are the parts of pistil which include stigma style and ovary while the parts of stamen include anther and filaments so this is the whole structure of a flower now we will discuss this functions of these structures firstly we will talk about this sepal 
it protects the unopened plant flower so the function of sepal is to protect the unopened flower what is the function of petal petal may be brightly colored to attract the insects so petals are mostly bright in color and they look very attractive that's why they attract the insects towards them third part is stamen stamen is the male part of the flower comprising an anther attached to a filament so as we have discussed earlier that stamen includes anther and filaments so stamen is the male part of the flower that comprises an anther that is attached to a filament so anther produces the male sex cells which are known as pollen while stigma it it is the top of the female part of the plant which collects the pollen grains so which part of the plant collects the pollen grains it is the stigma so it is the top of the female part of the flower which collects the pollen grains what is the function of ovary ovary produces the female sex cells which are contained in the ovules so these are the structures of the plant which includes structure of the flower which include the sepal petal stamen and the stigma and ovary and these are the functions of these structures now we will discuss about the process of pollination that what is pollination so pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to to the stigma so transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma is known as pollination what is self pollination self pollination is a transfer of pollen grains from anther of a flower to the stigma of the same flower or a different flower on the same plant so as we know that what is self pollination and what is cross pollination we have discussed about these two terms but now we will discuss a bit detail of these two terms firstly we will discuss that what is self pollination as we know that the self pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of the same flower or a different flower on the same plant so there is no variation not to be able to adopt changes in the environmental conditions and no reliance on pollinators but in cross pollination it is a process that transfer the pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of a flower on a different plant of the same species plant is different but the species is same in cross pollination so cross pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the flower on a different plant but of the same species it guarantees different type of variations better chances of adopting to changing conditions and reliance on pollinators to carry the pollens to the other part of the to the other plants of the same species so this is a bit detail of cross pollination now we will discuss at what is fertilization when a pollen grain lands on the stigma of a flower of the correct species a pollen tube begins to grow so when a pollen tube begins to grow when a pollen grain lands on the stigma of a flower of the correct species then a pollen tube begins to grow it grows down the style and into the ovary where it enters the small hole which which is known as micropyle in an ovule so a small hole which is known as micropyle the pollen tube grows down the style and into the ovary then it enters a small hole which is known as micropyle in an ovule so micropyle is a small hole which presents in an ovule the nucleus 
of the pollen then passes along the pollen tube and fuse with the nucleus of the ovule so in third step the nucleus of the pollen passes along the pollen tube and it fuses with the nucleus of the ovule this whole process is known as pollination so this whole process is known as fertilization so the process of fertilization includes firstly the pollen grain lands on the stigma of a flower of the correct species then a pollen tube begins to grow and it grows down the style and into the ovary then it enters a small hole which is known as microbial in an ovule then the nucleus of the pollen passes along the pollen tube and fuse with the nucleus of the ovule so this whole process is known as fertilization i hope it is clear now we we'll now we will discuss some features insect pollinated and wind pollinated so the petals in insect pollinated are large and bright, brightly colored to attract the insects while in wind pollinated small often dull green or brown and there is no need to attract the insects scent and nectar in insect pollinated usually scented and with the nectar to attract the insects and in wind pollinated no scent or nectar and no need to attract the insects number of pollen grains moderate in insect pollinated insect transfer the pollen grains efficiently and large amounts are required in wind pollinated because most pollen grains are not transferred to another flower pollen grains in insect pollinated are sticky or spiky and sticks to insects very well while in wind pollinated smooth and light and easily carried by the wind without clumping to gather anthers inside the flowers stiff and firmly attached to brush against the insects in insect pollinated while in wind pollinated they are outside the flower loose on long filament to release the pollen grains easily if we talk about the stigma in insect pollinated these are inside the flower sticky pollens stick to sticky pollen grains stick to it when an insect brushes past while in wind pollinated stigmas are outside the flower form a network to catch the drifting pollen grains what are the environmental condition that affect the germination of the seeds so germination what is germination germination is a process that is controlled by the enzymes in which the seeds begins to develop into a new young plant so the three main factors are needed for the successful germination so germination is a process that is controlled by the enzymes in which the seeds begins to develop into a new young plant so three factors which are required for the successful germination are water oxygen and warmth water lets the seeds swell and the embryo start to grow so water helps in the swelling of the seed and then the embryo starts to grow oxygen is needed for aerobic respiration while the warmth increase the growth rate and enzyme activity but very high temperature degenerate the enzyme denatures the enzyme so warmth is also required but on a required temperature it, it increases the growth rate and enzyme activity but if the temperature will be very high then it will denature the enzymes so that was the whole lecture it is the part 1 of 16th lecture part 2 will be uploaded further i hope you have understood all these topics that are covered in this lecture in this lecture we talked about 
sexual reproduction is sexual reproduction as well as the sexual reproduction in the plants further topics will be discussed in the next lectures thank you so much